Good evening, I'm Amy Burkett here at Romare Bearden Park in the heart of Uptown Charlotte. You know, I love being a part of this beautiful city and it is exciting all the growth that's happening. However, there are plenty of growing pains to go around. Tonight we begin our special report on Charlotte's growing pains with a look at transportation. It affects us all and I am certainly one of them. I actually live over the border in South Carolina and I fight that Interstate 77 traffic every single day going and coming. And I know you have similar stories. So we sent our Jason Terzas out to take a look at some of our transportation growing pains. An earlier accident on 77 southbound right around Tyvola has cleared from the travel lanes, but the damage is done. Transportation, it's one of the key building blocks of any economy. Traffic already backing up into Uptown Charlotte back to the John Dog Freeway. If people aren't moving, productivity suffers. Northbound 77 also pretty tight there from Arrowwood up through Woodlawn. With Charlotte growing at such an exponential rate, keeping up with transportation demands is quite a difficult challenge. I blame the city planners, sorry, I blame the city planners for not planning properly for the growth of Charlotte. Not long ago, Charlotte was just another dot on the map. Uptown was the place to shop, and the airport was so small, you could park right across from the terminal. In 1960, the city's population was 201,000, making it just the 59th largest city in the United States, with just over 700,000 people in the metro area. By 1990, Charlotte's population had nearly doubled to 396,000, 33rd largest city in the U.S., with just under 1.6 million people in the area. And just 26 years later, in the year 2016, the city's population had doubled again, ballooning to 827,000, 17th largest U.S. city, with nearly 2.5 million people in the metro area. The growth is def definitely uh, moving at a high rate. And what used to be a 5 o'clock traffic jam now starts about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And there's a reason why people are moving to Charlotte. Many reasons, actually. Quality of life, a growing job market, mild winters, and a low cost of living as compared with other major cities. We're growing fast, we're adding population, we're adding jobs, we're growing differently. As a major commerce center, Charlotte is attracting millennials and an increasing number of newcomers from across the country and around the globe. The inner city now is more prosperous, it's younger, um, uh, it has higher incomes. Trying to keep up with the influx of people, the city and state's departments of transportation are currently working on several major road projects, including the expansion of I-77 through the Lake Norman area with its controversial toll lanes, the widening of I-85 in the Concord Kannapolis area, the improvement of Independence Boulevard, and the nearly 20 mile long Monroe Connector Bypass, which will stretch from near I-485 to US-74 east of Monroe. Even the airport is undergoing a major expansion project. Sometimes I don't think the city planners are taking into consideration when they're doing the, the zoning and they're building all of this housing and these shopping centers, just how much traffic is going to be added to roads that are already overcrowded. And other major road projects are on the horizon. We've started a planning process to expand uh, I-485 uh, from the Johnston uh, Ray area over to US-74. Uh, we're also looking at managed lanes in that corridor. In addition, we're looking at adding an interchange at Weddington Road. So yes, it's, it's challenging sometimes to balance the pace of growth with the pace of infrastructure coming online. Those um, infrastructure projects take years to, to plan and design and acquire right-of-way and move utilities and actually do the construction. Keeping up with roads and infrastructure will be paramount as the city continues to expand. In the 15-year period from 2010 to 2025, the 10-county Charlotte metro area is expected to grow by over 600,000 residents. And over the following 15 years from 2025 to 2040, the area is expected to see another 800,000 people, bringing the metro area's population to over 3.6 million. That's a 30-year increase of 1.4 million people. It's basically like moving the entire population of Dallas, Texas into the region. From a congestion perspective, uh, big cities are just congested. Every one of them. Future highway expansion is planned, but DOT officials say we will get to a point where some highways can no longer be expanded. And as more people move here, congestion is only going to get worse. So with that comes a demand for a higher quality walking environment, higher quality bicycle facilities, more public transportation. That's why officials say mass transit will play a much larger role in the years to come. Charlotte's been very deliberate in its growth 
and very specific on how mass transit plays a very important role, not only in the quality of life of this region, but also the economic development strategies. The Lynx Blue Line opened a decade ago, connecting South Charlotte to Uptown. It cost $463 million. This stop is Tyvola Station. Nearly 16,000 people use the light rail on a typical weekday. Riders relax, poke around on their phones, and listen to music. Some even go old school and read the newspaper. At $4.40 round trip for adults, riders say it sure beats sitting in I-77 traffic and dealing with uptown parking. Traveling to uptown, there's a lot of traffic, and so to avoid traffic and save some wear and tear on my vehicle, which is a truck, and it's a little more cost effective to ride the light rail. It's more consistent. If there's an accident on the roads or something of that nature, um, then it slows down the commute, whereas I'm on the light rail for about two thirds of my commute and it's more consistent in time. In early 2018, the Blue Line extension is set to open, connecting uptown north to UNC Charlotte. Its cost is about 1.2 billion. Charlotte Area Transit System CEO John Lewis recently unveiled an ambitious plan to build three new light rail lines all at once. The Silver Line connecting uptown to Matthews, the Red Line connecting uptown to Huntersville, Cornelius and Davidson, and a third rail line connecting uptown to the airport. Estimated cost for the project, at least $6 billion. We will have to have a discussion with uh, the citizens of this region on number one, do they still want to move that plan together and get it done by 2030? And if so, are they willing to invest in that? The hub for the new rail lines would be the much talked about gateway station in uptown. It would also house a relocated Amtrak terminal, Greyhound bus depot, as well as local bus service and streetcars. Lewis points to cities like Salt Lake City and Denver, which invested billions into similar projects. Denver took a very aggressive uh, move with that, established um, their fast tracks system where they built out six uh, rail lines and did them all at once. But of course, the question will always come back to who pays and how much. We're stuck at this point from a financial standpoint. The state paid 25% of the original blue line costs, but will only contribute 10% for future projects. And with a new administration and new budgets in Washington, there's no telling how much the federal government will kick in. We have to put all walks of life into transportation decisions because they affect all walks of life. It affects uh, infrastructure, it affects business, it affects uh, opportunity for growth, it affects education. And so we have to balance all of that when we're making transportation decisions. With its growing population and busier roads, Charlotte is already experiencing and will continue to experience some major growing pains. Decisions made now will greatly affect the future. For Caroline Impact, I'm Jason Churches reporting. So what are your concerns about transportation? We'd like to get you in on the conversation. Please head to our Facebook page and let us